Hi, this is tech support engineer Nate Weaselquist at Prism Tech. Welcome to installing Vortex OpenSplice DDS on Windows 7. Here you can see that we have a typical Windows installation package. What I'm going to do is double click on it to run it. And here we have a splash screen detailing the merits of OpenSplice. What I'm going to do is bring this window down, we're going to click the next button and we'll see an end user licensing agreement which I'm going to accept and then hit the next button. I'm going to install into the default directory of program files Prism Tech and then hit the next button. I'm going to set the Vortex installation scope to the current user only so that I don't uh, mess with the variables, environment variables of any other user on my system. This is good practice when first installing OpenSplice. And I'm also going to have it set up my environment variables for my own user. This is also good practice to get started right away. Um, under obtaining a license, what I'm going to do is hit yes and hit the next button and then I'm going to go browse to my license. should be a .lic file. And the file is any.lic, so I'm going to open that. And then hit the next button. And now we're ready to install. This could take quite a bit. But what we're doing now is we're broadcasting our environment changes. And we're going to create the uninstaller, which should be good for uh, uninstalling very quickly if you need to upgrade to a newer version of OpenSplice. And what we're going to do now is we're going to install the provided license. That will happen automatically. And we're going to run the OpenSplice launcher. Here's the OpenSplice launcher, which gives us a lot of functionality in a very small package. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to configurations. I'm going to go to OpenSplice Share Memory DDSI and click on that. Uh, I'll go to the tools in OpenSplice console. What we can do here is run the command OSPL LIST. This will return nothing. It shows us that there's no OpenSplice domain running. Now what happens when I start the Vortex OpenSplice domain from the launcher? If we run the same command OSPL list, we see that the domain OSPL shared memory DSI is now operational. It's that easy. From here we can also run the tuner, one of our testing tools. Um, I'll connect to the domain by hitting the file. Uh, you can see with the green button that we're now connected to the domain and we can see all of those different DDS entities um, that comprise your OpenSplice system. We can also run the tester which is a much more robust tool um, for testing and also functionality uh, in terms of scripting and all sorts of other things. Um, the next is the OpenSplice configurator we can run, which allows us to change our XML configuration files and also double checks them for correctness. Um, lets you dive down deep into the services without editing yourself. Under the examples, you can see that the ping pong is the first one to run. You can change the language uh, on the right side, but um, it would be a good idea to run some of these and then um, dig down in and you can see that the uh, getting started guide and all our manuals are right here. We can double click on them and open up the PDFs. Very easy to use. To try this demo, download Vortex OpenSplice DDS. Visit prismtech.com.